So I wanted to pick the topic of atelectasis causing fever. Um, in medical school, we all learned about the five W's of postoperative fever. So wind, water, walking, wound, and wonder drugs. Awesome. So we've been taught, you know, the postoperative day one or two, the most common cause of fever is atelectasis. So where did it all begin? Um, we looked through the archives of surgery um, books in the library, and the earliest that I could find was in 1946, but I think it date, dates back even further, around 1930s. And what they're looking at is um, uh, Dr. Shields looked into the most common cause of postoperative complication is postoperative atelectasis. And so he, um, you know, he recorded that the classic signs and symptoms of this condition included fever, leukocytosis, cough, purulent, or tenacious sputum. When we look at this, this is not what we think of when we think of atelectasis. Um, and he goes on further to say that if clinical atelectasis consisted of pulmonary tissue alone, it is difficult to understand why it gives rise to fever, leukocytosis, cough, or sputum. And then he also talked about the fact that if simple collapse of the pulmonary tissue causes symptoms, why do such symptoms not occur in therapeutic pneumothorax? And they used that at that time to treat tuberculosis. And we know that as well, when we see patients with pneumothorax, they don't develop fever, but that is also atelectasis. And so what he ended up doing was performing an experiment where he ligated the middle lobes of, of dogs and in one group injected pneumococci into the lung itself. And so he looked to see if there was any fever that developed in either of the groups. Um, and unfortunately, he could not find any evidence of fever in either of these. Um, this was one of the m major earlier studies that they quote along with the next one, which is um, by Dr. Lansing, where he looks at the mechanism of fever in pulmonary atelectasis. And in this one, what he did was he basically took about 30 dogs and um, placed a cotton plug in the left main bronchus. And then he observed that within the first 12 to 24 hours, you had a rise in temperature, in heart rate, and respiratory rate. So from that, they assumed, OK, we caused atelectasis, and now we have an elevated temperature. He also had another experiment where half of the dogs he gave IM penicillin and streptomycin to. And what they observed was that there was no rise in fever during that time if they had given the antibiotics. So what he noticed was that after the removal of the plug, the cultures um, from the respiratory cultures grew streptococcus, clostridium, staph aureus, and other bacteria. And while it clearly showed that the antibiotics resolved the fever, indicating this is probably post-obstructive infection, they actually believed that the antibiotics may have masked severe atelectasis. And the thought process was if you removed the obstruction, then all of these things resolved, so it must not be the fever, it must be the obstruction that's causing it. So evidence against this theory. One of the first ones was around 1995, actually it dates prior to that, but Engron looked at the lack of association with, between atelectasis and fever. So he monitored 100 card, post-operative cardiac patients daily with chest x-ray and bladder thermometry. And what he noticed was that the incidence of atelectasis actually increased from postoperative day zero, one, and two, but the incidence of fever actually decreased. So there was actually no clear association between the two. And he said that basically this shows no association between the fever and the amount of atelectasis. So while we commonly are taught that there is, um, you know, that atelectasis causes fever. This experiment um, disproves that theory. There was another major one um, where they basically did a systemic search 
um, to look at all the studies that were done. This was, this was out in 2011 in CHEST, and it was done by Marcos et al., where they looked at atelectasis as a cause of post-operative fever, and they asked about where is the clinical evidence. So after pooling multiple journals, about eight studies together, um, they had evaluated 998 cardiac, abdominal, and maxillofacial surgery patients. And uh, except for one of them, all of them proved to show no association. Um, they didn't actually look at causation because if there's no association, we can't really look at causation anyway. So these are the different studies. Um, one of them is by Roberts. Roberts James, and he looked at um, the diagnostic accuracy of fever as a measure of postoperative pulmonary complication. And in his study, he basically looked at chest x-ray of 270 patients after an elective intra-abdominal surgery and monitored that along with the fever and found that fever was present in patients with atelectasis in only 56% of the patients. So he was not able to, again, show any correlation. And you can see from this with the multiple studies that have been done, basically they don't show or favor any association between them as it passes the, the midline. So it unfortunately doesn't support any other way. Um, Perez, um, he also looked to um, look at the association, and his was a study of looking at 100 patients after an elective abdominal surgery, and again, viewing it with chest x-ray and with fever, and they found that 31 of them developed atelectasis and 18 developed fever. Um, and then another study was done by Ephraimian, um, who looked at post-mandibulomaxillar fixation as well. So what exactly causes fever? If we're not thinking it's post-operative atelectasis, the idea is that it might be the stress of the surgery. So it might be a physiologic response to tissue injury during the operation and perioperative stress that may cause this elevated temperature. Um, Frank et al. actually did a study where he measured postoperative IL-6 levels in patients with vascular, abdominal, and thoracic surgery and found that an elevated temperature was associated with elevated IL-6 response but not with leukocytosis. And that may be you know, the cause of why you can see this elevated temperature postoperatively, but you may not see an elevated white cell count. Mm -hmm.